Okay, so also had a lot of uh, calls on um, the aftermarket radiators that don't fit like the original ones. I wanna go over a couple of reasons why. Um, this is an OEM SA200 radiator and it is 20 and a half inches wide, right? Of course, this one's broken, but this is the aftermarket one. It's 21 inches wide, so it's wider than the original SA200 OEM radiator. It's still a two row. This is an industrial core. You can see how wide the, uh, the fin assembly is. And this one's really narrow. This is an automotive core. There's a lot more solder in this than this. These still work in a pinch. It's always nice if you can get the original one redone. So the biggest problem is when you go to put your fan shroud on, it fits this one. It doesn't fit this one because it's too wide. So if you look at it and you set this on here, that edge hits by about an eighth of an inch on both sides. Also, this is slightly higher right here. So you actually have to bevel these corners off to get it to go past this. And you have to remove some of this material on this assembly right here on both sides to get that to fit. The other problem is, is that Your fan, your fan guard assembly is also narrower because of these spacers right here. So you actually have to cut these spacers in half on both sides and get rid of them to make that radiator, the aftermarket one, fit your original assembly. So there are some things that you're gonna have to modify to make these work. Everybody tries to buy the aftermarket ones because they're so much less expensive. An OEM one to have them redone. Now the way that the market is, they're anywhere from five to six hundred dollars. So a lot of people do the aftermarket ones to get by instead of having the original ones rebuilt. Um, anyway, that's that's uh, um, part of how this assembly goes together. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of uh, some of this and modify this, and then I'll show you um, me actually putting it back in the back into the the frame. I use nylock nuts. I've had problems with the nuts backing off and playing ping pong with the radiator. So if you're around a hardware shop or a hardware store, pick some up. Remember the governor area is lower. So make sure that it goes in this uh, bottom corner over here. This is a black face, so it has different uh, hood hold downs. Got a couple studs on the bottom of the radiator. 
go ahead and put those in first, but I put my sheet metal screws in first. So you guys work all over the United States. <clears throat> One thing you wanna be looking at is the hotter the weather, more water, less coolant, and it'll cool down a little bit better. But you're gonna need a lot of coolant in the winter time when it's zero degrees. They have a chart on the back. So depending on what your weather is, put your coolant in according, according to what's on the back of the coolant container. So remember that you're gonna have about a gallon that's still in that block. So it's only gonna take about uh, probably about a gallon and a half. So what I would recommend is put a whole gallon of coolant in it first and then top it off with water and see how much water you're having, having to add. If you're having to add more than about a half a gallon, figure out where you're gonna be welding at next. If you're in Colorado, put more coolant in it. If you're gonna be in Texas or uh, California or you know areas where it's staying in the 90s in the summertime, just add a little bit more water to it.